In this video, we'll first show you how manual blood pressure is taken, followed by an explanation of the physiology behind it. The first step is to find the patient's expected systolic pressure. A sphygmomanometer, or blood pressure cuff, is placed on the patient's arm over the brachial artery. We want to find how much pressure it takes to close off the brachial artery. You heard me. We are going to stop the blood from flowing through the brachial artery. When we stop the blood flow, it's an indication of how much pressure it takes to do that, and we use that as an indirect measurement of blood pressure. Because we can't see if we've stopped blood flow, we're going to use a downstream artery that we can palpate called the radial artery. The pressure when we stop feeling the pulse is our estimated systolic pressure. Okay, the pulse is gone. Looks like for this patient it should be around 120. We'll remember this number and deflate the cuff. After we've let the patient's arm rest about 30 seconds, it's time to use our stethoscope. We'll place it in the pit of the elbow, just distal to the cuff. We'll inflate the cuff about 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury higher than what we estimated the systolic pressure to be. We'll slowly release cuff pressure and listen with our stethoscope. Okay, that first tapping sound marks the systolic pressure. Looks like it happened at 1.15. We'll keep slowly releasing pressure until the tapping stops. It's gone. This happened at 70 millimeters of mercury. This is the patient's diastolic pressure. We'll deflate the cuff and record that their blood pressure was 115 over 70. All right, finding blood pressure was fun and all, but how did that actually work? After all, this is physiology. We want answers. Let's take a look inside the patient. When the heart contracts, it squeezes the blood from the ventricles into the arterial system, causing blood pressure to rise. The pressure of the blood entering the arterial system is called systole. When the heart relaxes, the ventricles stop squeezing and blood stops flowing. The decreased blood flow decreases blood pressure. We call this diastole. The arteries are going to experience the same pattern of systole and diastole as the heart contracts and relaxes. Let's take a look inside the brachial artery. Notice that blood in the middle of the artery travels faster than the blood on the edges. The blood is traveling in layers. We call this laminar flow. You might have experienced the same thing wading through a river or a creek. The water at the edge, where it's shallow, is slow and gentle, but in the middle, the water flows a lot faster. The same thing happens in arteries. Let's see what happens when we inflate the cuff. Because the cuff is inflated to exert a pressure above systolic pressure, the artery gets squished closed. This stops the blood flow and we hear silence. As we slowly release cuff pressure, the artery stays pinched until the cuff starts to drop below systolic pressure. Now that the artery pressure matches the cuff pressure, blood can squirt through and we hear a tapping sound. Notice that instead of traveling in layers, the pinch in the artery causes the blood layers to mix. This is called turbulence. This is like when a river comes to a narrow spot and you see lots of white water splashing and noise. Turbulence is noisy. The first tapping sound is also called phase one, or the first Korotkoff sound, and we record it as systolic pressure. As the cuff pressure continues to decrease, the artery becomes less and less pinched. The blood is still turbulent though, and we'll continue to hear tapping with our stethoscope. Once the cuff has reached diastolic pressure, the artery is no longer pinched. This allows quiet laminar blood flow to resume, and we hear silence with the stethoscope. The quiet marks diastolic pressure and is also called phase five, or the fifth Korotkoff sound.